Thank you for tuning in to another edition of the Vulcan Report. This report is for trading Friday, December the 6th. Currently you're looking at a chart of the E-mini S&P 500 futures. As you can see, the analysis uh, in this market this week has been spot on. The market has corrected from the last sell signal generated on November the 29th. This one was more significant than the prior one given on November the 18th. So we have more downside this time. We had a spike low on December the 4th, which would have been Wednesday. And then yesterday's trading, uh, we did not take out the low. We had a narrow range inside trading day which sets up for the following day for a breakout. And it's usually a breakout or it could even be a breakdown. But narrow range inside trading days are breakout signals. But we just don't know if it's going to break out or down. Because we've had a, uh, a negative downtrend channel, see, trend, downtrend channel, negative swing VIX, we would anticipate that it could break out to the downside and take out the support. Now, another thing you would look at is the fact that we are trading back within the volatility bands, and it's a huge range. Okay, there's been no um, coming back into alignment of the bands, so the market is still showing by the indicators that we've seen the high so far doesn't mean we can't get a technical bounce and try to take out Wednesday's high or even Thursday's high and that we could try to do this on Friday it just depends on the overall bullish outlook we're still in a bull market because we're trading above the Kumo cloud the top of the Kumo cloud here so we're still very much a bull market we could pull back all the way to the 1730 and still you know be bullish so we got 50 more points to the downside we can go and still be considered in a bull market okay if you want to be more technical you could argue and say we really have technically speaking to the bottom of the Kumo cloud as major trend line support so and that's down here around I want to say 1699 so with that said we have about 85 points that we can correct and still be considered uh, bullish, maintain a bullish standing uh, in the market. So that's just something to think about. All right. So we really haven't had any major corrections. We've just been straight up. All right, <clears throat> without any real break. So it's going to be telling. <clears throat> Excuse me. Which way we move? One other thing we want to look at. Let's take a look at the uh, weekly chart here. See if we can gather any new data. All right, from the weekly time frame perspective, we see that we've come down, we've taken out last week's low. Last week was a narrow range trading week because of the holidays, but really nothing substantial this week. Well, we can say, oh, the uptrend is necessarily in trouble. And again, on the weekly chart, we have major support. Our first support is going to be here at 17.26, and that's the blue line. All right, 17.26 and a quarter. The red line here is going to be 16.82 and three quarters. All right, that's our secondary support. Okay. And then the major trend line support is going to be at 1550, which is this black support line here. Okay, that's our major trend line. All right, so as you can see, we have over 200 SP points of fluffy cloud air that we could play with and still be in a bull market on the weekly time frame that's a that's an, a major amount of accomplishment 
this red line here is still major 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 support okay prices like to ebb and flow and revert down to this mean we tested it here on June the 28th okay spike test correction we try to test it again on August the 30th got close but corrected then came down and tested it again on October the 11th spike down and then we rally back up again so the question is are we going to test it one more again and that will be 1682 and three quarters <clears throat> that's a hundred points away so the question now remains do we have a hundred point drop coming in the market well if you look on the weekly time frame it says we have an engulfing bearish line and that pretty much means that momentum may be shifting from the bears to the bulls doesn't mean we can't have a nice little correction on Friday it's just saying that this is where we are right now so then how would you play something like this well I'm gonna give you the the price triggers from a weekly perspective just so you can get an idea of where we are and how major of a crossroads we're at I gave us the major crossroad uh, video the other day saying that the markets were at a major crossroad and we are we don't know if this is just a small little correction from which we're going to bounce or not I'm gonna argue and say <coughs> excuse me <coughs> that we probably gonna bounce from here because we didn't get we got a warning on the daily chart but not on the weekly all right here we got a warning on April the 5th but no real no nothing happens no follow-through we get another warning on May the 24th and we get a nice major correction then we get another warning on August the 9th and we get a major correction this time we did not get a warning all the market did was overcome the overbought condition that's all we did okay we just came off of an overbought scenario but nothing nothing major here therefore I have to say that we probably may not go down too much further from here looking at our last precedent though we got something on September the 28th where we had the white bar followed by the, the down red bar and then the market did go on to correct substantially but that's not always the case so we have to see if that's going to be the case or not we just don't really know right now so with that said from the wiki perspective on Friday you'd be looking for a bullish breakout above the 1793 uh, and a half or a continuation breakdown below 1776 even for the S&P 500 alright on the crude oil if you see we're still very much in a bear market but we have now bumped our heads at the trend line resistance we have not closed above it we've only bumped our heads on it that's pretty significant pretty substantial to say the least so with that said what I'll be looking for here is a possible one more day where we actually break out above it and try to touch the bottom of the Kumo cloud which is 99.49 all right I think the market really wants to try to get in that cloud before it breaks back down again all right and here we're trying to get across now the the T line is trying to cross the K line which is bullish when the blue line here the T line is below the red line here it's bearish it's a locked in bearishness the market is trying to cross now as of Thursday's close if we get another update on Friday and a, and a positive cross then that will help support the market and cause more upside potential so we have to be alert and see what happens. So for Friday's trading, uh, I'm looking for a long at 98.03. That's a uh, breakout to the upside. Or if we take out the support and break out to the downside, that'd be a break of 96.96. .96. So what I would be doing here 
is holding the long. The, if you're already long, you, you should have been long from earlier this week, and you're just trailing your stops, which is what I'm doing here. But I have a stop and reverse in at the 96.96 level. Now, one more thing I want to note about the, the crude oil chart. If we can get a, if we can get two two consecutive closes, bullish up closes above that trend line resistance, that means that we're setting up for a major, major bull run in the crude oil, and that r really excites me. Then that we've been long since the beginning of the of the corrective move from the downtrend. All right, looking at gold now. I'm also getting excited about the gold and the silver now. It looks like we may have bottomed out here temporarily. We may have hit bottom. <clears throat> we do still have a uh, downtrend channel, okay? Negative swing VIX. It did try to start a new downtrend as of Thursday's close, negative n negative momentum, but we're now trading inside the volatility band and the trend line resistance is starting to drop down okay um, we are probably just going to consolidate a few more days because we see that the um, the red K line is still way above the blue T line here which is locked in bearish momentum however <coughs> excuse me because we're within inside the volatility band now it shouldn't take long just a couple of days of trading that could possibly change all of that. The last time we saw a possibility of it, but we failed, was back here when we crossed up. And that was on October the 28th, but we got a sell signal there, all right, letting us know that crash was coming. So sometimes it can cross up and fail. We do have a lot of bearishness in this market, but because we're now inside of here, See what happened back here? Well, we had this major correction and we ran up, you know, uh, over 100 points. That could happen again. So that's what I'm saying here a possible corrective bounce of 100 points, which will put us into a possible bull market. That's the part that I'm excited about because volatility um, resistance is coming down. And if that happens and we narrow the range, then a substantial breakout could really. The market will build up a lot of energy for a substantial breakout. All right, as the market comes down, so that's what we're looking for here. All right, just like the last time, we we, we were up here for a long period of time, then the volatility band came down to get close to price, and then look what happened: nice breakout run. We broke out from a low of 12.74 up to a high of 14.28 huge run before we correct it back down and crashed again so a nice technical bounce could be in the works but I'm not gonna get too happy we have to trade what we see so I've been on the sidelines in this market because I'm just waiting for this uh, corrective potential to come but on the weekly time frame uh, you're looking at long at 1242.60 and short at 1217.40 um, in, in, the, in, the, in the gold Silver is looking a little bit, uh, a little bit better, and I'm gonna I'm gonna venture to say that we're we're gonna see that late 2010, early 2011 um, bull pattern emerging like we did in the gold and the silver, where we we're all able to trade and, and make a tremendous amount of money doing that. It was just like raining money. It was like an ATM machine with an unlimited debit card that you could just go and stick in the machine and just keep getting money out. Well, that new pattern is about to emerge. You can make an argument that you could have been, you know, shorting it, but it's not the same potential. It's not the same movement and, and velocity that we got when we had that bull run. The bear market has been slow and steady, like a, a slow and steady faucet drip, but nothing on the, on the scale of the bull market. When these metals get going on the bull side, they are tremendous. And I see that pattern, um, emerging and it could it could do so rather quickly sometimes <clears throat> you can get a lot just by looking at the indicators but not always there's some things in here that you can't really quantify such as intuition things of that nature I'm here to tell you that 
my initial target of 1850 we pretty much got close to that we hit 1884 uh, we might get one more spike down and hit the 1850 and probably bounce from there and get back up to this 20. If we can get back inside this um, consolidation volatility band, then that's going to hold well for a, a, a massive correction. And that will take us back up here to the top of the chart of 2550. Uh, it's going to take a couple of weeks for this pattern to emerge. Okay, We will need um, a lot of... A lot of uh, short sellers to start liquidating positions that gives a little thrush uh, you know, upward thrust to the market and then we need bulls to start piling back in again and large banks and institutions if that happens we could see the mother of all bull markets in the metals so I'm here to make an argument that pretty soon here I think the pattern will start to develop after we get this you know the last final washout here that we will see a major bull pattern emerge uh, from this pattern because it's starting even though we've been going down it's been losing some of its its spark like here we had nice big bars but then it's followed by a corrective bar that's not showing a lot of people piling on the short side that's lazy shorts that means that the market could be running out of steam to the downside and we could see explosive rocket moves like here starting to come back this is really exciting for people who are what we call um, you know silver bulls bear, you know gold bulls you know silk gold and silver bugs um, I'm not a bug I just like chart patterns I like to trade major trends in the market I have not participated in the downside of the gold and silver for many reasons and one of those major reasons have been because of the global economic climate all it takes is one incredible devastating piece of news to come out with long-term implications that could make the bull arrive in no time and destroy anyone who's short so that's why the short has really not been attractive to me yeah money could have been made but there's been greater opportunity if you've been watching the videos trading uh, the stock in indexes and the, and the, uh, the crude oil so that's where my focus is going to continue to remain, but I'm watching the gold and the silver for the buy signal because once it comes, and it's going to be here in a few weeks, it's going to shock a lot of people, I can tell you that. Um, it's going to be incredible. We're talking humongous gains, all right, like we saw in late 2010 and early 2011 where you could make, you know, twenty to $30,000 a week. <laughs> Easy. All right, that's it's going to be worse than that, and I, I know I'm telling you guys in advance. Expect them to start raising the futures margins in the precious metals and doing whatever they can to try to curtail and contain the beast. Once the silver beast awakens, it's going to be unstoppable. So I just want to preface all of that and let you guys know it's coming. It's been a long time. We've been patient. We've been waiting, but this is it. So keep your powder dry and ready. Uh, for this move, okay? Don't play yourself because you've been bored and you're just getting chopped up in the markets, just doing stupid stuff. Stay disciplined, and within a couple weeks, we're going to see incredible movement in these metals. And don't get me wrong, we could get a piece of news to come out overnight that could make the, the price jump $10, $20 from the prior day's close. J it, just because there is no trading limits in the precious metals just like there's really no trading limits in the stock index futures the price can go anywhere it wants whenever it wants so please keep that in mind this is not corn or soybeans or cotton where you have lock limit moves up and down this is the wild wild west alright so everyone have a great weekend and we, 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 we did very well this week in the market especially trading uh, the, the stock indexes and the crude oil um, didn't make a killing but at least it was it was positive so that's a good thing and we're looking for major movement to come um, in the coming week next week tremendous movements are coming in the crude oil and in the stock index futures alright tremendous movement so when you get these price triggers you want to watch it because I'm telling you the crude oil and the stock indexes are gonna be moving together and it's going to be explosive so be ready you, you saw the, the crude oil getting ready to explode 
Uh, it may even do it on Friday. So just please keep your eyes open on this, all right? So anyway, thanks for listening. Enjoy your weekend. And remember, take what you can, give nothing back.